uh, I split the screen on Facebook so I can show you guys the I can see I can show you guys my my screen. Yeah, so you can see some of the documentation that I have, some of the um, and the yeah videos or yeah all timetables and very very different things. Cool. So just making sure and can actually can you check on your Facebook if the link is live? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Just want to check that people on Facebook can see us as well. In the meantime, you're still joining us. So let's give it two more minutes. I hope everybody's doing good. Yeah, I hope everybody has your popcorn. Okay, good. Good, okay. Okay, so we have 14 people. So we have 14 people right now, guys. That's super awesome. Thank you. And then I need to see how you can see the comments here. Um, they pop up as zero. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's start, guys. Thank you for being part of this first time in history. We're going to do the bachata history in Australia. Now, I'm going to be reaching for my computer once in a while that is here because I have some, some notes. And uh, when I go, when I talk about this, uh, yeah, I definitely need, I want to make sure that I, it, it is fair to everybody. Cool. Uh, when you talk about history, if you don't keep documentation, uh, other, the history will change, but those who tell the history. And that's one something I don't want it to happen. I want to make sure that it is well documented. And I spent some time in this project, not just recently, but actually I have spent a good time uh, because I came to Australia in 2004. And without even knowing, I was one of the catalysts or one of the, I helped to push bachata in Australia from 2004 when I came here. And I was given the title of the godfather of bachata in Australia for, for, for being the one who made it possible. But that was not just me. It was just the help of so many more people in the community that started to love this dance, okay? So what I'm gonna, do, gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be a combination of my story with a, the input from other artists in the community as well. So we all get credit for bringing and making bachata what it is today, yeah? Now, uh, you guys saw a post that I put on Facebook and a lot of artists and friends and dancers communicated, uh, they wrote it, they wrote it and then they wrote the, the, the years that was important for, for them. So what I did, I went with everything that was given, I went and I did a fact check. Yes, I did a fact check because I didn't want, a, I didn't want fake news. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want fake news, so I went and what websites did I use? Especially I used the website that is called Wayback Machine. For those that use technology, you guys are probably familiar with the Wayback Machine. That is a website that actually keeps a, a record, a database keeps a record of all the websites in the world. So I went there, I went to cinesasa.com, 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 for example, and I went to the version in 2004. I went to the version in 2002, just checking where was the first version, where was the first time that website was mentioned in Bachata, okay? Or where was the first time this school promoted Bachata? So what I have right now is just a really good, and I'm very comfortable with the research that has been done. Uh, it's, it's not good that Facebook Live was not, didn't work the software that I, I actually paid a subscription, but it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, because I wanted, I wanted you guys to share with you guys uh, all, the, all the research and the documents and everything. Cool. I have some comments here. You say, good looks done, looks so worth it, very cute. Okay, Facebook Live, link in Zoom, perfect. Now, if, is that Sam over there? Yes. Yes, it is Sam over there, oh my God. <laughs> cool. Hello. Hello, so I have my, my father once here. Uh, <laughs> that's the new name that I took it from Kelsey. <laughs> Okay, uh, but I've been working a lot with Jason and Kelsey, so Kelsey, can you just monitor the comments? 
Mm -hmm. Would be possible yeah. or not? I'll be taking care of the chat and I'll oh, be taking perfect. care of Facebook as well. Cool. So if you have any questions, please go and uh, write, write them down. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you, I want all of you guys that are watching on Facebook or on Zoom, I want you guys to type right now the names of you, the instructors that are from Australia that you have learned from. Okay. I want you guys to type the names of the instructors from Australia that you have learned from. Go for it, guys. Go for it. I want you guys just to write the names. Please write them down on Facebook as well. I want you guys to write the names of the instructors from Australia that you have learned from. Okay, so that you have been here in Australia. So they have to be here, not that you went to a congress overseas and they were there and you learned from them. No, I wanted I want to be here. So, who do we have? Juan, Oliver Pineda. Good, you learned my stuff from Oliver. That's really good. From me, from you, Mark, Mitch Cool. So I'm going to be reading here, guys. Nestor Manuelian, Juan Ruiz, Mike Lee, Moro, Nestor, Carlos and Chloe. Excellent. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, Jamie Jesus, Samantha, Jason, Kelsey, Juan. Good. We have Mitch, Juan, Nestor, Carlos from Facebook Live. Cool. So uh, what I'm asking this because I want you guys to put some names to it. Okay? We're going to get a little bit closer, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. So I'm gonna, I want you guys to put some names to it to see if those names show up on the history lesson. Okay? So continue writing, guys. There is more, there is more names over there on Facebook. Obviously, Juan, uh, Andrew on Facebook, you misspelled my name. You say Juan, <laughs> it's Juan, and you misspelled uh, Mitch's uh, last name too. Blink, it's no blink, it's Billick. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, so we have one says here Juan and Kelsey, Jason, San, Mercedes, Pedro, Mark. You know that Coco was my first instructor. That's awesome. Yeah, Coco. You guys keep on writing here. Andrew Scott put Zach, Paul, uh, John Luan put Paula, and then, yeah, now uh, Andrew is laughing. Okay, cool. So let's start with the history lesson. The history lesson, guys, starts in, back in Australia in the year 2000. So go back and think what you were doing in the year 2000. What were you focusing on? What were your priorities? Mm, maybe the priorities were something completely different and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a bachata, it wasn't social dancing. Sorry guys, my people from Facebook, I'm moving the camera right now there okay so then you can see it properly good um, this technology when you want it to work it didn't work as we wanted to cool so in the year 2000 this is my research and what it has uh, what I discovered in the, in the year 2000 in the year 2000 um, I'm gonna mention some names that there are instructors are still current in, in today's uh, community and they have been they started back in the year even the year before the year the year 2000 so david smith she's an instructor from brisbane uh, she she runs the she runs the schools latin uh, energy latin energy productions so she went to miami and she learned bachata there okay and she she put it in the post that i put she put I had no idea what it was, but a whole lot, lot of fun, yeah? In 2001, uh, she was the mentor of Alex Bryan, who teaches in, in, in Melbourne. Uh, Alex Bryan said, I learned bachata from Debbie Smith after she got back from Miami. So that was the first uh, mentions on bachata in the community. In 2000, 2002, fast forward 2002, uh, Jamie Jesus and Patricia from Latin Dance Australia they learned bachata from one of the trips they did to Germany and Italy. Okay, I don't know who were the instructors, but that's what they learned bachata. And they, when they go back to Sydney, that's in 2002, he did mention that he did some workshops back in the time, but it was not his passion. I tried to go to the Wayback Machine, tried to look at the LDA website and to other places. I could not, I could not find a 
you know, a record of that, but, you know, we had to trust the work of the instructors. So that will be in kind of like the first, one of the first workshops that has been taught. Uh, same in Sydney, moving to 2003, we have Sky Blue from Picante Dance. She wrote as well that she started teaching bachata uh, in different workshops in different areas. Again, in those two, uh, 2002, 2003, we did have websites and everything was promoted via websites in forums. So I went to search and the forums, but I couldn't find a confirmation of that. But again, it's part of the history and it is, it is written there. Cool. Then we're going to 2004. 2004 is a very important year, I would say. Uh, for Bachata, uh, I have in the record that Carlos Galeano, Carlos Galeano from Brisbane, who runs Latin Step, he taught Bachata to Pascal when Pascal lived in Brisbane. Okay? So they were just teaching each other the steps. Most of the people here, like Davis Smith, she learned from overseas when she went to Miami. Uh, we have Jamie and Patricia, they learned, they learned Bachata, went to Miami. They went to Germany and Italy, and then we have Carlos Galeano, who learned bachata when he was in Spain. Cool, we have questions. Yes. Yeah, I, so Andy said, who is this person thinking the female? It's hard to hear one. Okay, then ah. Debbie Smith, and she is from Brisbane. Okay, cool, thank you. Sky Blue, she is from Melbourne, she is, but she used to be in Sydney before. Cool, sorry, yes, the technology is good. Asking me questions so then we can, we can uh, clarify everything. Cool, all right. And John look, Brisbane doing well. Yeah, John Luke was telling me, don't forget about Brisbane. And I was like, no, I won't forget it. I want to make sure that this is a very good comprehensive list. So 2004, we already have all these instructors who knew Bachata, but it, it wasn't yet like publicly promoted or there's no records of any bachata workshop or bachata class. In 2004, I arrived to Sydney in March 2004. I came to Sydney, I am from, I am from Ecuador, but then I lived uh, six years of my life in Chicago, United States. I went to a, a dance school called Latin Street Dancing, Latin Street Dancing, and I learned bachata from a guy named Dave. I tried to look his face, Facebook profile, I couldn't find it. So he is the person who introduced me to bachata. And in Chicago, there were a lot of Dominicans and Puerto Ricans there. So then the social dancing in Chicago, it really had a lot of bachata. It wasn't just salsa, it wasn't just mambo. It had, you had salsa, mambo, you have bachata, and you have merengue and cha cha. Uh, and one of the, my, my stories is that when I, when I joined the school, the Latin street dancing, uh, and I give them credit for learning bachata uh, as well. Uh, when I get, when I went to, when I joined the the performance group, joined, back in that time, social Latin dancing wasn't as popular as it is now. So they have only one team, and you made it to the team, you made it to the top. So I went through the auditions, and then I made it to the team. And the first choreography that I had to learn was a bachata choreography. And for me, it was a little bit disappointing because I wanted to do a salsa choreography because at that time salsa was king. So I was like, what? I joined the, this group and now I have to learn a bachata choreography. But I didn't like, a, I wasn't happy because I didn't know how to move my hips very much. I just didn't know much of bachata. So it was forced upon me to go and learn bachata. And I did. I did. I learned the choreography and I performed in Chicago. And then when I was social dancing, I loved my salsa. But then I always had my bachata, you know, as my second dance style. Cool. All right, okay, David Newman, I don't know what you're saying over there. Cool. Now, when I came here to Australia in 2004, the first thing I did was I went to LDA. Yes, before coming to Australia, I actually searched, before coming to Sydney, I actually searched on Google, a dance schools near to the University of Sydney, because that where is where, where I was going to study my, my master's. So, hey, look what happened. LDA was 80 meters away from my university. So I was like, okay, I don't need to research anymore. I'm just gonna go right away to the dance studio because I love dancing. So on my third day here in Sydney, you know, even before saying hi to the people who were, who were in my dorm, in the international house, I went to the dance studio and Nestor was the one who opened the door for me and he introduced himself 
and everybody knows Nestor. He's a very charismatic person. And he was just very welcoming. He just welcoming and, you know, and we always look people who, who know something more in dancing when you go to any dance school. So yeah, he was like, whoa, you know how to dance. That's really awesome. Let's go, let's take you. Uh, that was on a Wednesday. I went there and he's like, well, tonight we're gonna, we're gonna go out. So why don't you come with us? And yeah, I go dancing and I went. So Sachin says, you and Sorry, you said represent. Yes, you said represent. You <laughs> exactly. So I went on dancing, and, and they took me to the art house, and that was there my first time social dancing in Sydney. And then I heard salsa. Good, I'm gonna dance my salsa. I heard mambo. Good, I'm gonna dance my mambo. And then I heard merengue. Cool, I'm gonna have my drink. And then I heard salsa again. And then mambo, and then salsa, and then merengue, and then salsa, mambo, salsa, cha cha cha, merengue, salsa, mambo, cha cha cha, merengue. And I was like, whoa, something is missing here because nobody's playing bachata. So then I said, like, do you guys play bachata here in the, in the nightclub? And then Nestor told me, I heard about it. I, well, I don't know if he told me or not, but my recollection says, I heard about it, but uh, we don't know how to dance in here. And, and I was like, you know what? I, I love my, I, I do love my, my bachata because yes, that is great, but I need to dance bachata as well. You know, back in the time, bachata was a little bit more closer. You had the connection, not just, it wasn't, it's not as fast as, as salsa. So it was good to have that different feeling on the dance floor rather than just have the whole night salsa, salsa, salsa. <clears throat> cool. So then, um, so when I, I'm there in Sydney, I, I joined the team of LDA. I joined the team of the LDA. Yeah, yeah, I made it to the, again, again, I think they have only one team at the time. We're talking about 2004. I met Jamie, I met Marcia with the founders. And then Jamie did tell me that, yeah, I have learned bachata when I went to my trips, but nobody's teaching this. Nobody's teaching it here. And I was like, cool. I started, I teach my, my basic steps to, to Nestor, and then I teach the basic steps to the instructors on the LDA, and then I teach a, when I, you know, you start making friends at the, at the, you start making friends in the social community, I started teaching more uh, bachata steps to, to different people, to different friends. I can remember there was a, a, a girl named Cindy Macron. Uh, hopefully I pronounced the surname right. She became a really good friend of mine. She used to teach, uh, she used to learn uh, Latin motion. She introduced me to Oliver as well. She introduced me to Oliver and then Oliver was like, oh, you're the guy who knows bachata. Well, good luck uh, bringing bachata to Australia. He didn't say those words, but something like something like that. Yeah. So little by little, I started like teaching more people how to do uh, how to dance bachata in a very informal way. And then uh, I used to go to the nightclubs to we have cruise bar at that time, uh, who was by Dwight Escobar. And I remember just asking him, "Hey, can you play uh, one bachata?" And then he would just uh, flat say no. No, I won't play it because nobody's going to dance. Uh, why would I play it if I don't want to uh, get people out of the dance floor? I want, I want them to, to stay. And, and, I was, and so I kept on trying. He kept saying no. I went to other nightclubs as well and said, hey, can you play some bachata? And they will say no. First, because nobody knows how to dance. And then they don't have any music. So then I started giving music to the DJs. I was like, hey, here's some music. And I was like, uh, at least I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be dancing, you know. So I'm gonna be dancing, and then I have some other friends with me. And say, at least you can have two couples, but we need some bachata. So that was the year 2004. Uh, there was no official. Uh, let me look at my records. Cool. Uh, that was not official. Promoted on in the internet on any website, any bachata classes. But then, um, yes, I started teaching uh, informally to different people in the community, okay? And I was involved with Latin dance Australia during, during that time. Cool. How are we going so far? Everybody so far? Everybody follow me? Do we have any yeah. questions there? Yeah, it's going good. Um, we have Anthony and the Adam. I can on, if I get your last name right. I'm very sorry if I don't. Um, uh -huh. Maria, he says definitely in 2004, they were barely playing when I started dancing eight years ago. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then Celine added, now we play the top on the dance floor. So hashtag win. Yeah. <laughs> so we're reading Celine's comment. Hashtag win. We play yes. bachata, everybody dances. Yes. And then Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Um, we have someone who wrote what I need to represent. Mm -hmm. That's very random. And someone who we just shouted out to Juan saying, Juan Direction. Ah, Juan Direction, guys. Thank you. Cool. So we are in 2004. Okay. So that is 2004. Now moving to 2005. 2005, very important year in the bachata development. In January, at the end of January in Sydney, we had the first Sydney Salsa Congress. Okay. And that was run by uh, Jamie and Marcia from Latin Dance Australia. The first Sydney Salsa Congress, the first time that Australia was having a national event. Amazing news. Guess what? Did they have a chata? Yes or no? What do you guys think? 2005. Uh, some people are saying yes, some people are saying no, and the answer is no. They did not have a chata at the festival. It was just mostly, it was just salsa. And you know what? If you don't believe me, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. In my computer here, I have, I'm looking right now, my computer, I have the timetable of the Sydney Salsa Congress. Okay, so you can see that there was no chat. I will, I will read you some of the instructors that were there. They had Al Liquid Silver Espinosa, Eddie the Salsa Freak, Adrian Medina, Jarima Moro, who taught Afro Cuban, Nina and Julian from Latin Explosion, Alex and Chile. They have Milton Cobo and Samantha, and Samantha from the Cobo Brothers, Sharon Pakir, uh, Graciela Breno from LDA, Hugo Salcedo, they have Tarcicio from the Rhythmics, they have Tropical Gem for the Tropical Gem fans, they have, once again, James Cobo, they have Oren from Salsa Vibes, they have Jamie Jesus, they have uh, Samantha Erskine, Idalberto Alcala, Juan Rando, uh, Alex Espinosa, Javier and Mariana Mambo Lounge, Carlos and Diana from Latin Steps, Giancarlo and Liz from uh, El Latin Dance Victoria, and Alex and Chile. So there was just salsa, 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 and mambo. Yes, uh, I'm gonna get. It's, uh, I'm gonna get Kelsey to take some photos and upload it for you guys. Okay. And this is the thing that I wanted to show you guys on the on the screen. But if anybody wants it, I can send you guys the documents as well because it's good to see, you know, who was there at that time and who was doing who was doing what. So that is 2005. That is the scene. It's as a Congress. No bachata there. Uh, in January as well, this is a brand new information when I searched, they had the Tropicana Festival in 2005 in Adelaide. Okay. That was organized by La Bomba. And I believe at that time it was Natalie and Hugo who run La Bomba together and they have the Tropical, uh, Tropicana Festival 2005. I went to the website on the way back machine. They did put the word, you know, come dance salsa, bachata, merengue, bachata, and all the dancing styles, Latin styles, with bachata, with workshops in the above styles. But then when I went to the website in the Wayback Machine, even though they promoted as a dance for the social dance floor, there was on the workshop schedule, there was no bachata workshop as well. So I'm assuming that they had just bachata music playing at, at the parties. Cool. Now, on the 12th of March, in Sydney, LDA, in one of the parties, they promote the parties and they promote the first publicly promoted bachata workshop. And you can guess who was the teacher. Yes, it was me. Okay? It was me and I taught it with Jenny, one of the instructors at that time from LDA. And I have a screenshot as well of that promotion. So maybe you want to take a photo? Kelsey, you can. Ah, uh, social contact, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, give me one second. Sure. I'll preview, yes, I'm going to open here. Cool, so... Oh, shit. Yeah, so cool. what she's looking right now is the LDA website back in 2005 when it says parties. Yeah, so, and then Super Saturday Workshop, not that one yet. 
And then we go to the Amigo Salceros Party. And that was the name that Jamie Jesus came up with. And then he says, Bachata Workshop with Juan El Bachatero Ruiz. Okay. So was, that was the first time Bachata was being promoted publicly and that there is a record of it. Okay. I remember teaching that workshop with Jenny and it was packed. It was packed. We had like 80 people. Oh, yeah, maybe 70 to 80 people in the Latin dance. So they, they were the same place as they are right now. So we were at not the brand new studio with the four or five students they have, but when they have only two floors. So we were in the bigger floor. And I remember it was 80 people who were just curious because the word just, it was out there. The word was out there that there is bachata. We need to learn how to dance. We want to learn how to dance. Who is going to teach it? Yeah. So when we did the workshop, 80 people showed up. And for me, that was like, Oh wow! This is this is really this is really nice to see that uh, the work has get, has gotten out there. I still had my love for bachata, but then and so I still had my love for salsa. But then slowly bachata started to you know get inside me because I was like I am making a difference here. People can uh, people are starting to fall in love with, with this dance. So I took the workshop and then I remember in the next five days I think we have another bachata workshop. So then uh, the workshop is starting to become more popular at the parties in Latin, Latin dance. Okay, uh, you are in the Zoom. Uh, uh, Kelsey just uploaded uh, some of the images there. So you guys can see it. And if you guys, if you guys are on Facebook, <laughs> Father of Bachata, if you guys are on Facebook, uh, yes, I can just probably post some images or you can ask me for the documents and happy, I will give it to, to you guys. Um, I, there's a question on Facebook. Yes. When did One Direction start? <laughs> when did One Direction started? I think that was 2014. So it's way past, so 2013. It's way past. We're still going right now in the year 2005. Cool. All right, guys, feel free to keep asking, uh, typing questions. I'm happy to answer them. And the more questions you ask, the more information I can share with you guys as well. Um, in 2004, I started to, I did the first bachata workshop at LDA uh, publicly, the first publicly bachata workshop. And I like to call it, it was more the traditional style, which is like people together, dancing together, moving the hips. Yes, there were some, uh, some turn patterns, but there wasn't much. It was pretty much learning how to keep the beat, uh, how to maintain a cross connection with your partner and how to move the hips. Yeah. Then, then, yeah, we have some turn patterns, yes, but it's not like as, it wasn't as evolved as it is today. Cool. So that was on the 12th of March. At that time as well, I have to mention that Nestor was already teaching bachata as well. Uh, I don't recall exactly what it was, but he was one of the instructors of LDA too. So on the, in September in Sydney, that was the Latin Dance Corroboree. Now that event was organized by Natalie Seller and Oliver Pineda. And that was another national event, the, Lat uh, the Latin Dance Corroboree. Uh, let me read it again, yes. And that was in September. And they, that Nestor put the, the right word and then they actually asked Nestor to teach bachata uh, at the festival. But Nestor said, like, hey, why don't you give the, the, why don't you give the workshop to Juan? Because he's the one that has been teaching here in Sydney and just promoting it. So I got to meet Natalie and I got to meet, I, once again, Oliver. And then the workshop was given to me. So Nestor, thank you so much. That's really important part of history because that was actually the first publicly promoted bachata workshop in a national event. Okay. So once again, at the Sydney and at the Latin Dance Corroboree, in 2005, September, we taught the first workshop in Bachata at a national event. So then now the reach was even bigger because we have people from other states coming and getting exposed to Bachata, not just a social dance, but as a dance that is being taught in the classroom. That's when I met, I met Debbie for the first time and she told me, I'm glad something along the lines that she was happy that I was teaching it and that, yes, she has learned it, uh, you know, when she went to United States in, in Miami, but it was good to somebody else was, was teaching the star because she was focused with salsa. Cool. So that was a very important, a very important milestone to have the first bachata 
workshop ever in a national event. And the other thing, at the same time, I taught a workshop with Jenny, one of the instructors from LDA, because at that time I was part of the, of the LDA staff. And one other thing that happened at the Latin NASCAR Corporate is that I performed together with Jenny the first ever bachata choreography in Australia that I know of. So that was the first ever bachata choreography. Uh, I had a rose. I entered like a good Latino, good Latin lover. I entered with a rose in my, in my mouth, like biting, biting the rose. I can't remember much, uh, much the choreography, but I'm sure it wasn't as good and stylish as it is now. Hey, but hey, you know, we were putting bachata onto the main stage. Uh, I hope there is a video of it. I don't have a video. I only have the memory of, of that. And I was talking to Mitch the other day, and I think he has one video saved somewhere of that performance. Maybe it wasn't at the Latin Dance Corporate, but of that particular performance. But that one is important because that was the first ever bachata performance performed at a national stage where people from many states could, could see it. Okay? So that was the Latin Dance Corroboree in 2005. And then in October, we have the Australia Sasa Championships. The Australia Sasa Championships, I don't remember exactly who were the organizers of that. So if you're listening to this, this podcast, uh, you just can remind me who were the organizers of the Australian Sasa Championships. The, but that was another, another event, another national event. And I, they asked me to teach another workshop there. So I teach my second workshop. And I taught, I taught it by Jenny, who represented LDA. And that was the second national workshop. So in 2005, Australia had two national events that publicly promoted bachata and they had a bachata workshop there. Okay, so, and at the same time in October, uh, in, in November, the, in, in October, sorry, October again, we have the Sydney, Dar uh, in Sydney, the Darling Harbour Fiesta. Okay, the, uh, the Darling Harbour Fiesta, that was a massive, massive party that used to be sponsored by Bacardi. Yes, Bacardi the Rome used to sponsor the party in Darling Harbour. And it was amazing because not only they give you samples outside, but they have some of those little kiosks, so you can take the sample, remember the good old times. Uh, it was nice because in the harbor side, they just had the platforms and it was just a really big, massive Latino party. They have during the day, they have a, a performances, then they have some like very friendly workshops for the family, uh, but it just gathered, it just gathered a lot of people and it wasn't just promoted by the Latinas community. It was promoted by the government in Sydney. So I don't know exactly the year that I started. I think they started in 2002. But in 2005, uh, through LDA, because they had a, they had a spot to, to be one of the, you know, of the, of the, of the people that, uh, of the schools that, that teach and entertain, uh, through uh, the LDA spot, Jenny and myself, we perform the routine, the bachata routine, to a larger audience who were not uh, Latin dancers. And I remember I was just nervous. I was really nervous because I, it was just like, whoa, this is, this is taking me to places that is, is more than I could imagine. And now just to be dancing a brand new dance style to people that have no idea. And yeah, it was a lot of pressure. I remember that was one of the times that I was really, really nervous. And at the time as well, bachata is growing, is growing. And I remember having a conversation with Jamie Jesus, because in the schools, you know, we, we see a, a trend or we see a, a potential in a dance style of an instructor. We want to make the most out of it. And I remember having a conversation with Jamie and then Jamie asked me, uh, Juan, a, would you like to be known as Juan El Bachatero Ruiz, like, you know, in the community? So we promote you as the main bachata uh, guru, guru and, you know, a person. And, you know, at the time, I still love my salsa, and I was like, mm, I don't know, man, I don't want people just to know me for bachata. I want people to know me for salsa as well. Hey, little did I know, right? Little did I know. And then she's like, okay, fair enough, I know. I understand you because yeah, he loves salsa too. I love, I love my salsa. But then my bachata love, because all the experiences that I had 
and then how it was uh, changing the community, how it was impacting the community. Definitely, my love for bachata started growing. My hip movements by that time was really good as well. So I was a lot more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, a lot more comfortable. And, and then I was getting a lot more creative as well with bachata. Okay, because just dancing together side to side just wasn't, wasn't enough, you know. Uh, just the fact that we took the uh, street dance to a stage, to a workshop area to teach, we had to give it more structure, okay. And then when we took the dance, with Jenny and myself, we took it to, to the stage, we had to give it more fancy, fancy steps. So people don't see just two people dancing together, you know, connected, they actually had to get to see a, a show. So, yes, yeah, so that was a, I remember the conversation I had with Jamie. Oh, thank you. Sorry, right, that's, that's Jason who brought me some water. Hopefully you guys have some water, you have some, your popcorn, and you guys are enjoying all this history that I'm giving you guys. Yeah, while you drink your water. Yeah. Um, Mitch has commented that he's, um, when you were talking about um, one of the performances that you said that wasn't recorded, Yeah. I think. He says, I'll find it and eventually upload it. I have a CD somewhere. Ah, oh, but thank you, Mitch, man. That would be awesome. And please, if we put it online, don't laugh, don't judge, okay? <laughs> that was done in 2005. The knowledge was limited, and we don't have much knowledge as it is now, okay? Shout out to Jenny Reinhardt. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. That was Jenny Reinhardt. That was, yes, definitely. That was the person who I did the, the, the bachata. The, the bachata uh, performance with. And there's another name, and her name is Mel. Uh, Mel, she was uh, one instructor from the LDA. I don't remember her last name, but she used to teach uh, the bachata workshop with me when I used to teach at LD, LDA. So thank you, Mel, as well, for being one of the first ones. Okay, cool. And uh, let me just read a few more comments. I'll find it for reference. Woohoo, awesome. Okay, what destiny, man? I guess I was, I guess I was, uh, Celine say destiny, man. Yes, it was destiny for me to be one of the pioneers. Okay, I didn't, I didn't look to be the one. I didn't came to Australia with the idea I want to bring bachata to Australia. Everything just happened very organically, and everything happened very beautifully as well. It happened very, very nice. So I had a conversation with Jamie. Uh, because, yeah, he saw the potential in me, he saw the potential of bachata. I kind of declined at the beginning. I was like, no, I want to be known, you know, as a sacero and bachatero as well. But then the, my love for bachata started to grow more and more. Okay, so we are in October. Then in November, in, in January, from November 2005 to January, I moved to Brisbane. I moved to Brisbane for some personal reasons. I moved over there, and then I met. Uh, I got together with Debbie Smith. Remember the name Debbie Smith from Latin Energy? So I got together with her, and then she's like Juan El Bachatero, and I was like, Yes, that is me. <laughs> let's do something. Let's let's push bachata here in Brisbane, and I was like, Let's do it. So we organized workshops with Latin Energy in Brisbane. And I remember it was a very busy time uh, teaching uh, bachata workshops, bachata classes, and, and then just being, I got involved with Latin energy a, a lot. And thank you, Debbie, as well, because she opened the doors when I went to, went to Brisbane. And then she helped me uh, through her school to reach a lot more people now in Brisbane pushing bachata. I remember Carlos Galeano as well, I met him. He asked me if I want to stay in, in Brisbane, if I'm going to go back to Sydney. Again, because, you know, there's still the potential of the, of the style. And me of, as an instructor as well. Uh, but yeah, so that was a really good time in, in Brisbane. I got to meet other instructors as well from Brisbane. And I got to see how bachata started to be played more. And also how more uh, instructors and in schools started to, you know, to embrace it as well. Cool, so I have that. Um, other notes that I have, I, in 2005, I don't have a particular, I don't have a particular date, month for it, and I tried to look at the website as well, uh, uh, but Oren and Pascal from Salsa Vibes, Oren and Pascal from Salsa Vibes, Oren lives in Melbourne right now, he's not currently dancing, 
Pascal you know from uh, from France Assets uh, Francis Vice they started teaching bachata she wasn't either sure it was in 2005 or 2006 okay so I tried to look for it in the Wayback Machine I couldn't find any record on the website but hey again I have it written there for the history then um, I have that in 2006 as well, and at some point, Nola Comis, Nola from A Touch of Salsa, she was introduced to Bachata in 2006. And then that's something that in Melbourne, in Melbourne, I don't have the month, but I only have the year, 2005, Donovan and Angela Faith. Uh, Donovan Crocane, she was a very prominent instructor back in the time, and DJ and promoter. And Angela Faith, you probably still know her because she's very active in the community. She runs Infinity Dance Company in Melbourne. Uh, they they touch uh, they they taught uh, bachata uh, uh, they taught bachata workshop at United Styles, and I believe that was run. United Styles is either a night a party night or or a venue, but that was run by Melbourne Melbourne Salsa. Okay, so in 2005, we don't have a specific month, but that was, um, yeah, Melbourne had, uh, had Bachata workshops taught by Angela and Donovan. Cool. See, I'm trying to incorporate everybody's, not just my story, but trying to incorporate everybody's hard work in this. I couldn't get much. I was trying to, okay, I'm gonna keep moving on. I keep moving on. Let me check right now if we have any more comments. No. Um, oh, we do. Um, so someone called Tim on Facebook Live, he says, Google historic terms, records June 2004 is the first time Australian, I think he meant by the first time Australian kind of a chat that thing. And John Lou says, Donovan has the first salsa congress in Australia, Brisbane in 2002. Opa, yes. So that's a lot of history. Uh, John Lou, thank you for sharing. I asked you before, <laughs> okay? Uh, I will look more to, to see what sort of workshop was offered uh, at, at that festival. And another thing, uh, by that time, I asked Nestor, Nestor, give me your, give me your, your dates when you told the your workshops. Uh, but then he was busy and he said like, uh, just say whatever you need to say, you know? But don't forget that I gave you the workshop, the Latin Ask Corroboree. And I was like, yeah, brother, I won't forget it because that was a very important one. So, but I know at that time, I think Nestor and Patricia decided just to have a career and decided to travel to different places and start teaching bachata as well. Okay, so now we have the, uh, again, keep in mind that bachata was very close, connected, okay? There was no, there was no a dance, uh, doing shines in bachata, that was an insult. Yeah, that was, that, that didn't have to happen. Everything was a, a party dance and you had to be together yeah, so partner world that's, that was good, but don't go too crazy. It was more about the connection that you have with your, with your partner. So that was in 2005. Cool. So key point, hopefully we get the video from Mitch. That will be awesome of the bachata choreography that I did with Jenny. 2006, 2006, I was still in, I was still in, in Brisbane. And in January, we have the Cine Salsa Congress, the second one, Cine Salsa Congress. And I remember um, uh, Jamie asked me, are you gonna come back to Sydney? So I'll give you the workshop, the bachata workshop that we want to have there. But for unfortunate reasons, I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it because I was still, I made it to the festival, but I, but I was still uh, sorry now, my living situation in Brisbane, Sydney, I didn't know exactly. So I didn't take the workshop, he did offer it to me. But then the workshop was given to um, Richard and Mel from LDA. Okay, so they taught bachata at the Sydney Salsa Congress, at the second Sydney Salsa Congress, and that was good to know that there was a bachata workshop over there. And then the other thing was that the bachata was played right now at night uh, at the parties as well. So yay, victory. By that time, let me tell you, I was really happy to be called Juan El Bachatero Ruiz. And I was happy with that because for me, I just saw the impact that Bachata had in the community and how, how people embrace it. And they, you know, and salsa was the king. Salsa was the king and everybody wanted to be known by uh, how good their salsa is. Even me at that time, I wanted just to perfect, perfect my, my salsa. But then I was like, well, you know what? This beautiful uh, dance style of Bachata has so much to offer. It has a different feeling. And 
it's okay. It's okay to be labeled a bachatero and I'm happy with that. And it's okay people don't get to know me as a salsero because bachata, I see the future in bachata. You know, that was back in 2006. You know, I was like, yeah, I see the future in bachata and I'm happy for people to recognize me as Juan El, El Bachatero. Okay, so 2006, so we have the Cine Salsa Congress offers the second, uh, the bachata workshop by Richard Amell. Then I have on the records here, now this is documented in May, uh, in Sydney, a picante dance, a, a sky blue, the one of the directors of Bachata Festival, uh, is documented now on her website that she uh, started offering regular weekly bachata classes as, as well for bachata. Uh, and in November, Baron Latin Fiesta, uh, she mentioned that she did taught a workshop, uh, the Baron Latin Fiesta Sky taught a workshop at Baron Latin Fiesta. So, as you can see now, bachata is starting to become a style that it has to be in all national events. That was a big victory because when I came here in 2004, there was no bachata music, no bachata dancing, no bachata workshops, no bachata classes. There was nothing. So we started with few people. I started with few people, teaching few people here and there, and then getting, a, you know, the clubs to start playing music, and then getting the schools to start doing workshops, and then getting the the events to start doing, a, yeah, to start doing workshops at the at the events, and then going with the performances as well. Okay. So 2000, uh, what I have as well, 2006, I have a touch of salsa. Uh, led by Nola, they started teaching weekly bachata classes as well. And by that time, in 2000, um, I believe that yes, LDA was teaching bachata classes as well with Richard and Mel at that time. Okay, uh, cool. So that is 2006. How are we going, guys? Um, Vanessa would like to know um, name the bachata artists or bachata music you guys were dancing to in the early days in Australia. Yes. Oh my God. Obsess uh, yeah, it's Obsession by Aventura. That was a song that was played a lot. And Monche yeah, and Alexandra. Monche and Alexandra. La Hoja en Blanco. So that was played a lot as well. Uh, great memories. But when I hear a DJ playing those songs, I'm like, no, there's so many more songs to that. But yeah, that was the main popular one. That was Obsession by Aventura and, and La Hoja en Blanco by, by Monche y Alex y Natalia. Or Alexandra. Cool. Any other questions? Do we have any? Um, Mitch added Aventura, Monchi, and Alexandra. And Monchi. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, <laughs> so many memories there. <laughs> no. I was. Toque de queda. Yeah. Toque de queda. I'm not quite sure we listen to them here in Australia. Uh, maybe we're overseas. Uh, but yeah, Toque de queda was. Uh, they have a very popular uh, Borracho y Loco. The song Borracho y Loco that was a very. Very popular one. Toby Love, yeah, that was the music, that was the songs uh, of those days. So that is 2006. We are 9.27 p.m. Um, we haven't have reached 2006, if you don't mind me. I'm gonna, let's finish with 2007, okay? So we're gonna be going a little bit extra of the hour. Hope that is, that is good and nobody's running late to go to work and see the girlfriend. All right, but let's let's go <laughs> let's go to 2007 because 2007 was a very very important year, and maybe you know if the reception is really good of this research that I've done, uh, then I can do the next series of this to go from the year 2008 to 2012, and then keep moving more and more because it's very very exciting. But 2007 was a very important year for Australia in bachata. We already have a chat in Australia. It was already on the, on the national events. It was already, you know, playing the nightclubs. But the Sydney Salsa Congress, I have the, in the history here, in the January, Sydney Salsa Congress, that's the third Sydney Salsa Congress, uh, they bring the international artist, Tony Lara. At that time, he was international. Now he's a national, right? Everybody knows Tony Lara. He lives here with us in, in Brisbane. But yes, he came from Italy uh, to teach a... Uh, to teach at the third Cine Salsa Congress. I do have a PDF document of the workshop schedule there, okay? Yeah, and I have a workshop schedule of 2006 as well, 2007. Cool. So, I have Jason right now, he's taking a photo of it. 
I'm going to read you some names, Ryoko and Ryu, Angela and Tulane, Juan and Amanda from Triple Step Mambo, so that was not me, Ian Corbett, uh, Victor and Bourdieu, Ali Kud Silver, Silver, Carlos and Nelly were there, Catherine and John Paul, Josie Neglia, Jose Valenzuela, Giancarlo and Masha from New Zealand, Sharon Pakir, uh, Spin, a guy whose name is Spin, Jamie Jesus and Little Liz, Yun and Nari from Korea, Angelo Salcedo, Santo Rico on to Vida Latina Pro, that was from Brisbane, Richard and Marcia on LDA, La Bomba, Reggaeton, okay, but, yeah, 2007, now what is, I'm trying to find, Tony, what is the name of Tony, oh, Tony Lara, so he taught the workshop on Sunday, and the room Sasa Athletes at 11.45 p.m. He taught bachata Italian style. Tony, I hope you remember that. Okay, so I, have, uh, I can send you guys the, the document. That was the, the workshop. I didn't teach at that time. I don't remember why I didn't teach at that time. Uh, I, I, if I remember, probably I wasn't part of LDA at that time anymore. And I think I was just moving more into more being independent. But yes, I didn't teach that, didn't teach that workshop last day. had a... Um, Tony Lara, who was there, and I, I asked Tony, do you have a video you performed since 2007? But Tony told me that he doesn't have a video, or, or there, was no, there was no performance of that year, but definitely he taught uh, bachata, and then he was promoted as well as a salsa and bachata DJ too. So it wasn't just a, you know, salsa DJs coming, but a bachata DJs as well. So that was very exciting, okay? Uh, now in November, uh, yes, uh, in November 2007, uh, I joined Sasa Republic, who is led by Sherry Lan. Sherry Lan, and then I was doing workshops, and I was teaching classes with her, but I took one of the workshops uh, with her, and to, uh, I took a workshop with Katrina, Katrina Quinta. Everybody knows who Katrina Quinta is. She's one of the directors of LDA. She was, she was not part of LDA at the time. I think she was part of I Latin Dance, a school out west. And we taught uh, Pasitos de Bachata. I mean, we taught Bachata Shines. And that was the first reflection that I have in Australia. I, was, I will not take credit for the world. That was the first reflection I have of somebody teaching Shines in Bachata. Boom, mind blown over there. I remember when I post, we have the video. I have the video on my YouTube channel. I will share it so you guys can see it. Of course, the, the footwork is not as intricate as he was right now, uh, as it is right now. Uh, but I do remember getting a lot of backlash in my YouTube channel. If you go back to the comments saying like, what are you doing teaching Chinese in bachata? That shouldn't happen, that shouldn't be done. Bachata is a partner dance. So I got a lot of backlash in, in the international world. But you know what? Uh, we just have to ex experiment with it. I wanted to continue uh, growing bachata and I couldn't just continue teaching, just being close together and going side to side, okay? So then I started doing some bachata, bachata shines. Bachata shines there. Cool. Uh, then another thing that I have, something very important. Hold on, I have, who is Tony Lara? <laughs> okay, cool. Any question, no more? Okay, everything has posted, good. So now, uh, then in October at the Sydney Harbour Fiesta, you know the big event, when I perform bachata for the first time, we have Carlos and Ellie. Uh, I think they were in Sydney. Ellie used to live in Sydney, I believe, and then she moved to Brisbane. But Carlos and Ellie performed bachata at the Sydney at the uh, perform bachata at the Sydney Harbour Fiesta. Again, you know, and, and made a really good place to showcase bachata to people who are not part of the Latinas community, okay? And then in December and January, December and January, uh, the end of 2007 to the beginning of 2008, we have Tony Lara coming back to Australia for a national tour, okay? So then, and during that time, December through January, he taught at, at LDA, and he taught at Brisbane Nine Moves uh, with the promoter being said, Bukosin, Bukosin, and he taught at Adelaide uh, uh, with a La Bomba studio with Natalie Stanfield, that was the promoter. He taught at Melbourne Salsa in Melbourne with Frankie Frank, 
and Gerbli Teresi, who were the directors of the school, Kitora Cambra, a Cambra Studio Coco Loco with Becky, uh, Becky Lee. Uh, he taught in Wangawi with Petera Hudson. Uh, he's they are the promoters that's in New Zealand. And in New Zealand, he taught in Auckland uh, at the school of Giancarlo, uh, Giancarlo from Latinissimo. Okay. Uh, so yeah, by that time, by the end of 2007, you could tell right now, all the schools were keen just to have international artists and to come and to teach and promote the classes. And every time, you know, uh, either myself or Nestor or, or Tony, you know, when he did his tour, he went to a school and teacher or a city, you know, you will see the, the, the ripple effect. Then the people will want to continue learning and then you will have the national start instructors, the local instructors try to, to learn and continue with the momentum of bachata, okay? Uh, I have as well that in Brisbane, in 2007, I don't have the month, uh, Ellie, uh, Carlos and Ellie from Latin Steps, they started to teach bachata regular classes in Brisbane. Cool. So that is 2007. How are we doing, guys? How are you guys? Juan and Katrina shines in 2007. Oh, yes. Oh, Kelsey just posted there the video of the of the bachata shines that is there guys enjoy for your viewing pleasure not no judgment okay <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> we're talking about how many 2007 we're talking about 30 years ago all, all right and i'm going to leave it as is uh, i'm going to leave it right now uh, this chat uh, we're going to finish right now 2007 that is as much as i have of the documentation 2008 it's uh, not an important year that we can talk later. I will talk to you guys in the next episode, episode two. I think this is very fun. But 2008 is the beginning of the Sydney Bachata Festival and the Australian Bachata Competition. Okay? So we started to have national champions here in Bachata. Plus, we have the first Bachata Festival, not only in Australia, but in the world. Okay? So stay tuned. That was, that's going to be for the next for the next episode. But really, guys, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it, and I really hope that you guys recognize some of the names that I have mentioned this in this webcast, because if, even though I love it and appreciate it that people recognize me as the father of a chat in Australia, it wasn't just me. It was with the help of all the national instructors and the faith they put on me, especially you know, to take the risk to for the first workshop uh, at a national fair, or for the first workshop at a party you know, or the first performance on a big stage. So I want to say thank you for, to the Australian community, to all the people back in the day. Uh, I hope they brought you guys, uh, you know, back to the memory lane, uh, some good memories, some good laughs. Uh, I would like to ask if you, all the instructors that I mentioned, if you have some of your videos or photos at that time, or you teaching bachata, please post it, because this is part of, of history. And all these people right now who are dancing bachata in 2020, Okay, they only know bachata for what it is now, but not the struggles that we all have to go through to make bachata the king. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, the king or salsa is the queen, whatever it is, but salsa and bachata is going equally right now. So it, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it wasn't as popular as before, but from 2008, we started the bachata festival, then it just you know, it's a different story, okay? So guys, uh, give me some comments right now. If you have any questions, I'm gonna leave it open for a few questions, okay? You have any questions so that I can answer, but try to keep it to the year 2000 to 2007, okay? Uh, yeah, Stephen Cox say, also shout out to all the instructors who contributed over the time. I agree 100% and I gave them the, the, the shout out. It wasn't just me, it was a, a community effort. Uh, Jan Luc saying, thanks Juan, you're welcome my friend. Give me more information next time, man, Jan Luc, no hold it. Okay. Uh, David Espejo, yes, I look forward for the next episode. Thank you, Bachata Juan, for helping bring Bachata to Australia. Like I say, it wasn't just me, it was a, a community effort. Uh, cool, any comments on Zoom? Um, no, I think we're good. We're good, any comments guys? You guys enjoyed it? Give me some thumbs up or some likes, yes? That was on history time, okay? You guys enjoy your popcorn, here's my water. <laughs> now, uh, another thing, guys, uh, this has been recorded on, on Facebook, uh, so please, please feel share to share this uh, to everybody. It's part of history. It's good that it's documented as well. 
So we all can have the same history, okay? And if there's any days or something that needs to be changed, um, just let me know. I'm happy to have the, the right records, you know, for, for, for the bachata history in Australia. And so it's something good that we can have. Uh, I don't even think it will be harder to have for salsa because that goes way back in the 1990s. But hey, you know, if I can do this to keep the record of bachata in Australia, I will do it. I have a spreadsheet with all the dates that I mentioned to you guys. I have documentation or screenshots of different websites that uh, are starting to mention bachata as well. And I'm happy to provide them. Maybe I need to find a location where I can put it so everybody can have access to them. Okay? Uh, we do have one question. Yes. But Anthony said maybe for next time, I don't know. But you asked first Dominican artist that came to Australia and the first Pachata Festival. First Dominican artist that came to Australia. Oh, uh, Celine, sorry. <laughs> first Dominican artist from international, you mean? Uh, I don't have it on the top of my head. I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm, I'm still doing the research now. I will do more research for the next year. Uh, but definitely we didn't. Uh, we have, in 2008, we have Rodney Aquino who taught uh, Dominican Bachata. Okay, that's part of the Sydney, uh, for the history of 2008 for the Sydney Bachata Festival. Uh, but I'll look into that. And then that was the other question? The first Bachata Festival. Uh, Sydney International Bachata Festival. That was the one. <laughs> yeah, that was in Sydney. No, that was no? No, next question, she's saying. Ah, oh, okay. It was the same question. I was just wondering if the first Dominican artist came to the first Bata Festival. But it's uh, for next time. Next okay, time for next time. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I have a question from Tony Lara. How sexy was Tony Lara in 2007? Uh, for the <laughs> records? Not good at all, man. <laughs> That's for the records, okay. <laughs> well, you have to look. Uh, we need videos so of you performing, my friend. 2007, send us some videos. Or the workshop so that we can have it in the history, okay? Um, we have questions. Yeah, Facebook, they're on there. Facebook, okay. Uh, I heard Tony Lara was the sexiest vegetarian in the world. Well, I just mentioned it. That's for the records. I just mentioned, I just answered that question. Uh, I think we could make a series that all the school can share as part of the syllabus. Yeah, ideas. Well, this is something new, right? With, with this situation right now, we're starting to use technology and connect in different ways. So something that we could consider on. Okay, uh, were the terms like traditional, moderna, and Dominican started being used? Good question, Tim. Okay, she's asking, were, were the terms like traditional, moderna, Dominican starting being used? No, at that time it wasn't. Okay, we only focused just on what type, one type of bachata that was still, we want to call it bachata. It is through the Cine Bachata Festival in 2008, and this is just moving to the next year, because we have now a full timetable of bachata workshop that we have to start giving it a name, okay? Before we only have just the event, a workshop timetable with all the different salsa styles and mambo styles and then bachata. But then we're having bachata festival, we need to have, a, have to give it a name. So that didn't happen until 2008. And then I will share with you guys as well the time, hopefully I can find the timetable of the bachata festival. Cool. All right, uh, next question. What was the first festivals, what was the first festivals to teach bachata in it? Uh, is you talking about the, uh, that's from Mitch? You talking, you talking the first festival in the world to teach bachata? I don't know. Uh, my research is only focuses on in Australia only. So, but I'm sure like, uh, yeah, you can, we can ask Tony. He, uh, he's been doing this for a long more and he lives now in Australia, so definitely he is the source of that, that knowledge. Cool. Hold on, there was Italian and Madrid style being used. Uh, yes, but uh, that's, I'm going to repeat from Tony. And uh, it says, hold on, there was Italian Madrid being used. A uh, good one. And that was probably when uh, in Australia, like again, this is the, 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 uh, the research here in Australia. So I'm going to look right now at 2007. And yeah, when uh, Tony taught, uh, he in 2007, he taught uh, bachata Italian style. Now we can, uh, at the same time, we have Super Mario teaching salsa London style. So a lot of instructors used to put their, their name or the city or the country that they used to live as part of the style. But when it comes to the more known uh, styles of 
like a moderna, traditional, or sensual, they were not used yet. Okay, there was one type that we call it Madrid style, a bachata Madrid, Madrid style. But yes, like it wasn't yet. Uh, it was used the city to describe the sort of move, not to describe the style in itself. Okay. Cool. I'm going to continue reading here. Uh, the first festival in Australia. Well, I have on my records that the first festival in Australia. I have on my records that was the Sydney Sasa Congress, but I had to read a uh, John Luke's comment that he put something about Donovan running a festival. So I had to get back. Uh, Ronnie Man, Ron, Donovan has the first Sasa Congress in Australia, Brisbane, in 2002. Okay, so that's that's then the first uh, Congress in, in Australia. Um, who called this kind of dance bachata? Mary Lee, who calls this kind of dance bachata? Well, the Dominicans. That's no question asked. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, bachata comes from the Dominican Republic. They gave it, they gave the music the name and they gave the dance the name. Cool. Any other questions, guys? Anything on Facebook? Anything on? No, we're good. And we're good. Okay. Any, any other questions, guys? Good, I see some thumbs up on Zoom. It's been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. I haven't spoke for so long ever in my life. <laughs> it's been one hour and seven minutes of just talking, not stopping. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Please share the video. Uh, say thank you to all the instructors that were mentioned in this, in this webcast. And then stay tuned because we definitely we need to have the part two of Australia. His bachata history in Australia, guys. Thank you so much. I love you all. Keep dancing bachata. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye bye. We need some bachata music in the background right now. Oh, bachata music oh, in the background. Oh, <laughs> no, it's too long. It's too long. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.